Okay, so let's jump into this video and talk about our closed loop Bluetooth two controller we're going to be working with in our FuelTech Manager software. So when we're doing our tuning process, specifically our fuel tuning, we're going to have a wideband that's wired into our FuelTech controller. We're going to be able to look at what the wideband is showing us and make adjustments for our fuel table to get to the target air fuel that we want. Now we can take this a step further. We're going to be able to actually specify the target air fuel in our software that we want, and we're going to have our FuelTech controller take a look at what our wideband is reading. It's going to be able to make adjustments to our actual main fuel table to get us back to the target air fuel that we're programming. There's going to be a whole bunch of details to cover and to go through all that in this video so it's very clear how to implement this in your tuning strategies. Without further wait, let's jump into the video so we can check it out. Okay, so let's get started here. We're going to be taking a look at our closed loop fuel correction in our fuel tech software. So the closed loop fuel correction is going to allow us to have a target air fuel we're going to be specifying in a target air fuel table, comparing it against our actual air fuel coming in from a wired band that we've wired into our fuel tech controller, and it's going to be able to make a adjustment based on the difference between those, whether it's going to have to add fuel or take fuel away from our main fuel table, it's going to be guiding us and making our actual fuel changes in our fuel table. And after we're done with our tuning process, it's going to be able to keep our air fuel dead consistent from day to day or different months or seasonal changes. So it's going to be similar to the idea of a short term fuel trim if you're familiar with OBD1 or OBD2 OEM ECUs and how they operate. So we're going to be using this extensively in our tuning process. It's going to be imperative that we understand how it works. So let's first talk about setting up our wideband because this is extremely important in order to implement this function properly. Let's jump down here under inputs. I have in my O2 number one slot or my number one input slot, I should say, I have my O2 general set up here. I went to my channel name and I went to uh, O2 general. We have a bunch of options here. We have different cylinder. If we have wide bands per cylinder, we could select those. But O2 general is going to be just a general wide band. I have a four cylinder in this application. So I have four cylinders, one wide band. That's going to be just the overall uh, uh, reading in my exhaust. So if you have a V8, V6, V10 engine with two wide bands, you would have to specify bank one or bank two. So you'd see here O2 left, O2 right, or if we had wide band per cylinder, we'd actually select the wide band here that would be corresponding to the cylinder as we're setting up our inputs here. So nothing super complicated about that, but our O2 channel is going to be just our general wide band that's going to be in our exhaust that's going to be for an inline four, inline six cylinder engine. So the next step here, I went to my input sensor and I went into my default. Um, and right now you can see here it's 8.7 to 16 to 1 air fuel is what it's specifying. So the scale from my AM wideband gauge is 0 volt is 10 to 1 air fuel, 5 volt is 20 to 1 air fuel. 